Hi folks, in this video I want to show you a few simple tricks you can use in Silhouette Cameo, things like how to curve your text and how to bring an image into Silhouette Cameo software and maybe break it up so that you can use different colours and stuff like that. So keep watching. Right, well first of all, I've just updated my Silhouette Cameo software. If you have a Silhouette Cameo, you'll probably find that every now and again it prompts you to update the software. So at the time of me doing this video, I'm up to Silhouette release 4.1.201. So that's the latest one I've got at the moment. Yours may vary, yours may be slightly different, but the principle's still the same, even though the layout might change. So what I'm gonna do first of all, is just show you uh, a simple way that you can actually use curved text and this is how I do it in our Silhouette Studio software. So let's have a look. Right, well, as you can see, the addition of my version I've got here is 4.1.201. I'm actually using the Silhouette Cameo 2 at the moment, and uh, but as I say, the software just updates like that. Now, I could have put this on the screen capture, but I mean, it's easy for me to just point things out as and when I'm doing stuff here. So I'm just getting used to this software. And um, as I say, your, lay your layout may look a bit different, but the actual controls are the same. You've just got to find out how to work them. Now, before we actually dive into this, I just want to show you one other quick thing. Now, I don't know whether you're familiar with this website at all. This is called DaFont, and it's at dafont.com. And what this website allows you to do is to basically search through a whole myriad of different styles of text that you can add to your computer's armory, so to speak. Uh, and as I say, you can go by category, or you can just literally flick through, as you can see, all these are style, different styles of fonts that you may want to look at. Let's say, for example, we choose cartoon fonts. So we click on cartoon fonts, and then as you can see, you've got pages and pages of different types of fonts that you can actually add to your computer's armory. And I'll show you how to install it. I've got Windows 7 Pro here. And all you would basically do, let's say I choose this one, uh, the Super Mario. You'd click the download button at the far end. You'd then save the file to your PC by clicking OK. Know where you've saved it. I've saved mine in my downloads icon up there. So I'd click that. I'd double click to open it. The file opens up and that's what you'll find in, inside the zip file. You double click on it and you're then presented with this window, and as you can see, you just click the install button, and then click install, and it will install this font into your computer. That's how you do it on a Windows 7 Pro PC, and I can prove that by going over to our Silhouette Cameo now, and if I go to our text tool over here, let's just move that page in the middle there, go over to our text tool, Here's our text tool, and we should have the Super Mario in our detailed list there. So if I scroll right the way down there, and there we is, there, there it is there. So if I click on that now, and click on the page, I've now got the Super Mario style text, which I can now use with my cutter. And don't forget you can do that with any of these styles on the default website, so it's a very good website to pick up some different fonts that you can use on your PC for cutting out. So that's just showing you how to install them as well. If you've got a different PC, it may be different, but all the instructions are on the font, depending on what sort of version of Windows or uh, Apple or Mac or whatever you've got. So that's how you do that. Right, okay, so here we are. So we're in our Silhouette Studio software, and all I'm going to do now to get some curved text on the screen, this is a 12 by 12 box, as you can see there. And all I'm gonna do is to go to the shape tool and I'm gonna get a draw an ellipse tool, click on that. And then basically all I'm gonna do there is just to draw an ellipse to the size roughly I want it, and then let go of the mouse. And as you can see, I've got that on the page now. I'm now gonna to go to my text tool and I'm going to, I'm gonna use the Super Mario text and I'm gonna write down, uh, let's say for example, my name on the text. Now you may see this little round circle here, and we need this activated, and it's got little crosshairs across it. So just bring the mouse into that, and then hold it down with your left mouse button, and drag it down to the top of your curve, and you'll see that the writing jumps to the where the curve is. And I've still got my mouse button down, 
and as you can see it goes all the way around and wherever you want to put it I'm going to keep it at the top there like that and just centralize it and then when you're happy with its position let go of the mouse and then you can actually click outside and that is our curve now if we want to adjust that at all all you need to do is to click on the curve and then you can make it bigger the writing or smaller as you want as you can see like that and then click outside again now this is an actual cut line as well so once we've got our curve to the size we want we actually have to click on the writing wait till you see the little hand go onto the writing right click and then click release compound path and what that does it separates that writing from that curve and that means that you can move it away now we move the curve away by dragging it down. I'm just gonna right click on it and delete. And all we're left with is our curve text, which we can now move to anywhere you want on the page. And that's how you get curve text on the page in the Silhouette Cameo. One other little thing I'd like to show you is to bring in an image. Let's say, for example, in Google Images, I've got the YouTube logo. So if I want to bring an image in onto this now and modify it so that we can cut different aspects of it out, I'd go to File, Merge, and I've brought in the new YouTube logo. As you can see, I'm just going to put it there so we can see where it is. Now at the moment, these are all different aspects. We've got different coloured writings, so we may want to do these in different coloured vinyls, which is obviously no good on one piece of paper like this because we can only cut out one coloured vinyl at a time. So what we need to do is to break up all these different elements here into their individual elements and then group them in their respective elements. So what I'm going to do first of all is come over to the far side here and I'm looking for the open trace window pad there. And don't forget, if you've got the older style of um, Silhouette software, you'll find the trace element is up at the top bar there. You just got to hover the mouse over till you find it. So I'm going to click on that. That opens up the trace window. And I'm now going to click select trace area. So I basically want to get the mouse over our image of all of this. Take the left mouse button, click it down, and then drag a box over all the elements we want to trace. And then let go. Now as you can see, everything's gone yellow there. And I now need to go over and click the trace style. Well, I don't want to trace the outer edge, I want to trace everything, so I'm just going to click Trace. And once we've done that, I'm now going to pull that image away by holding the left mouse button down, and as you can see, it reveals the cut lines of everything around it. So I don't really need this image now, so I'm just going to right-click on it, and then click Delete. And as you can probably see now, we've got all the cut lines around all the different images, but we've got a different coloured letter in there, we've got a different background there, and we've got a little white triangle there for the play button so we need to separate all these out and the way you do that again would be to click on the image so that it activates it right click and then release compound path and what that does it activates every item as an individual element as you can see there look every letter is an actual pathway and they're all separate now so we don't really want to move them because if we move them we're going to have a problem let's say for example actually oh, i've moved the y look don't worry if you accidentally move something. Go up to the back button under the object button and just click back and it will put it back to where it was. So you've always got that to fall back on. Right, so now you've got to separate what you don't need here and group the rest of them. So for example, this little white triangle, I can leave where it is because it's gonna be white, the same color as the writing, but I don't want the red outline. Put the mouse till it activates on the red outline. Hold the left mouse button down and just drag that off the page. There we go, just moved it off the page. Pull that back into the center again. And these lot now, because they're in the correct location and they're all white vinyl, I'm just gonna group them back together again by taking the, the, the pointer mouse outside and drag it, holding the left mouse button down and dragging a box around all of them images and then right click this time once you've let go and then I'm gonna group them items together. Now basically what we've done now is group them all back together again. As you can see, I can move them as one and I can resize them if I want, but I'm gonna leave everything the same at the moment because I've left that size the same. So now what I could do would be just to put that up there if I wanted to, so I don't wanna waste any paper. And I could go along and group everything if I was happy with that location by dragging the box over all of that. 
and then right click and I can actually group that as well. So now when I come outside, click it again, I've actually grouped the writing as well. And because that is on the page, that will all cut out. But because it's vinyl, I need to uh, reverse it. There's a couple of different ways you can reverse it. When you click to cut, it gives you the option to do that. Or you can just right click on it and then flip horizontally and then it's all ready to go. So that's that. And then what I would do would be to cut that out and then when I've finished with that, I'd then move that off the page because every time you move something off the page, it won't cut. And then I bring this on the page, but not changing the size or anything. Put that up there, put my red vinyl in and then I'd cut that out. But what I'd probably do in this case, because I'd probably keep some of these as spare, if I wanted to just recreate some more of these, just cut some off, if I was making multiple t-shirts of this size, I'd right click on it and copy, and then right click again, and then click paste. And that brings another one exactly the same up. And I would just line a few up there by clicking paste again, like that for example. And I'd probably cut three out at a time, and that way, you know that you, you know, you've got some spares and you're not wasting any paper. I can always keep my cut things at the top of a sheet so when it's finished cutting, I can cut a line underneath there and I've got the rest of the vinyl that I can still use. And again, if I wanted to group them, just join them all together, right click on them, click group, and I've then grouped three of them and I could take them off page as well. And then I could go back to my white vinyl again because I've grouped everything on there and bring everything back onto the page again like that and there's my white vinyl all ready to be cut out again. If for some reason this YouTube was in a different color, let's highlight everything again. And now let's ungroup everything by right clicking once you get the hand and then clicking ungroup. Now these two items have now been separated. If I click on this, as you can see, this is one group now, but I've still got the little white tick there. So I can now click on that one and click ungroup. And now everything here is now, as you can see, is individually grouped again. But I may want that tick to stay white, but I may want this to be a different color. So all I would do would be to drag a box holding the left mouse button down just over the words. And then I'd regroup by right clicking now and clicking group again. This time I've now grouped all the letters. And as you can see, I can move the letter off the page. Just do the white, leave that where it is because that's in its correct position. And if I wanted to group these two together again, I'd just drag a box over all the things I'd want to keep, right click, and then group. And then as you can see, all this is on, uh, been grouped together again. So I could print all that out in white. And then when I finish with that, I could move that off the page. And I could bring this on now and put that at the top there. And then put a different colored vinyl in, let's say a sparkly vinyl or blue or whatever. And I can cut that on a different colored vinyl. And all you would do would be you, you'd assemble it on your t-shirt in the different colors by printing each one individually. Right, there you go. Hope that was of some use to you. So what we've learned in this lesson is how to bring separate fonts in, new fonts, more exciting fonts into your PC by using the, the font website. We've learned how to curve text in the Silhouette software by using the ellipse tool and attaching a curve to it and then ungrouping it and then deleting it. And we've also learned how to bring an image in, which may be a multicolored image in one block, how to separate it, and then how to put it back together so that you can actually create different colored designs on vinyl on your Silhouettes Cameo software. Anyway, hope that was of some use to you. And if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.